news. Welcome to the news. Yeah, I know, Loz. It's a very interesting question. We couldn't hear that intro. Really? No. Oh, wait. Hmm. Did you turn the thing back on? On your VS code? Your VC code? Your code Code cable? Code? Never mind. Let's just keep going. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Yep. You're right. I forgot about that. Yep. 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 Oh, well. As it's well, just very center. It's fine. Yeah, it's that's that's fine. That one's that one's easy though because you can see it, so it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the news. This is uh, Compi News for the week commencing the eighth of January, twenty twenty-three. I, as always, am Nazif, and and I am joined by uh, I am always I am, I am always Nazif. That's true. Uh, I'm joined by Zeno and Laws. How are you boys doing this week? Laws, I think he's having a stroke. Yes. Fine. Right, let's get let's get right on into the news then, shall we? Mm. Uh, so I, as you can see, I've changed to a dark reader because it's it's much prettier, it's much oh. nicer. isn't it? Oh, isn't it just nicer? Yeah. So there is a new trailer for an iOS and Android action RPG based on "Is It Wrong to Try and Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon." Uh, it only shows off a bit of the battle system, uh, but it is, is described as allowing the player to experience the show's story and battles with quote, anime-like 3D graphics with the anime's cast rep reprising their roles. Uh, the game is free to play, and players can assemble their own party with classes like adventurer, assist, and scene cards, whatever that... It doesn't really explain what that is, and I don't know... Uh, it will also include ro battle royales against the other characters. Closed beta starts March 16th with the full release sometime in spring 2023. And I wow. can... I, yeah... And it's gonna uh, get shut down in autumn 2023. Well, it's it's for uh, more than just I o iOS, so got Android as well. But that doesn't matter. It's, it's a mobile Android, game. It's just gonna it? get shut. Oh, I it's just gonna get shut was, down. Yeah, for some reason I thought it was gonna be PC uh, as well. I mean, eventually, of course. But um, Connor's about heading towards the second anniversary. You don't know that you play it. There we go. Oh wow. Yeah, it's it's definitely some Genshin Impact type of stuff. I mean, but it, it's why is this not it, on PC? I don't know. Maybe it will be at some point. I, it's a yeah. it's a lot. It depends. It's a lot of work to get a, the a version that connects to the PC. But to be honest, I I just think long term it's just better to be able to play it on PC because the fact is that and well no what what what's actually happening? I think the Windows can can emulate an Android phone naturally. Uh, I thought it was eleven that could. Yeah, eleven. Yeah, when is eleven? Yeah, 11 ten. 10, sorry. Uh, no, yeah, ten. Okay. Um, eleven. Yeah, and and eventually, yeah. what's going to happen is that you'll just run it through the. That's true. OS. That's a fair point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's still going to be emulation ever... regardless, but it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. essentially just stops you from having to get things like blue stacks. Yeah, but yeah, it, but things. I uh, mean, some mobile games have standalone. You know. Clients. Clients. Yeah. Emulating the phone. And mm. then the game, it just, I'm, I, yeah, I doubt that, I imagine the client still emulates stuff or whatever, but it's still just all wrapped into one separate thing, like Diablo Immortal, for instance. Uh, also, Sorry, no Diablo word. What? Immortal. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Also, no word on if this will be multiplayer uh, or if it's just single player with AI, you know, allies. I know, at this point in time, I think I'd rather the single player. That's kind of what I'm imagining, especially with the Battle Royales, it's going to be... Uh, you against, like, the AI. Right, should we uh, move on to the next story? Yes, so this one will be uh, it's a little bit outdated, but it's still not too, you know, still still kind of interesting and relevant. Laws? <laughs> I know. Uh, it... I know. I know! What? So, I, I, I did put something in a little bit at the end, but I, yeah... When's this coming out? So Mark. this is actually airing today on stream. So what? It, it aired. So okay, <laughs> just <laughs> no, 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 no. Like I think Loz is asking. Oh, when's when is when is this show coming? airing? Oh, tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. 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 So so as of recording, this is this is technically almost out just of date already. 
<laughs> John and Lewis from Mercury's fine episode was delayed due to streaming services and units of COVID-19. The show aired normally on broadcast television and then was de- on later a day in streaming. For some reason, Nazareth has kept this in the news because it doesn't make sense. They did not reveal why, but it's likely an issue of submitting in time it in time to be properly encoded and implemented, despite the fact that stream, um, streaming websites <laughs> of dubious repute had it on the day, uh-huh, uh-huh, meaning uh-huh, that's uh-huh. probably a lie. I don't um, know why this is so this weird. It's just it's, really I, weird. Yes, it I, is very weird, Dazza, that you I, well, have this I mean, in this news. I mean, it's gonna, because it's weird, because it's so weird well, that they delayed it on streaming by a just day. To, just to give some credence for Nazareth, though, like... It, this was reported on the 6th, two days before it was due to come out. Yeah, uh, yeah, but but I put it in there because yeah. it was such a, it's just such a weird, why, how, why, why is it delayed yeah. by a day for streaming services? If, but even then, you get, Because businesses suck, and if mm-hmm. there's somebody who makes it their job that this doesn't go out till I've given my go-ahead. Yeah, that's that probably what it is. Off, and then when you get several people in a string that say, oh, it doesn't go out till I get my, give my approval, or I do some menial thing on it that doesn't really need to be done and can actually be edited post the release, but I'm going to demand that I do it pre-release, and I'm off, then it doesn't get done. Yeah. Also remember, I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not an expert on this, but my understanding is the, the way the Japanese business structure is set up is very rigid, old-fashioned, and not open mm. to dynamic thinking at times let's put it well i mean american businesses aren't that great at that either uh my understanding is in america they still use little uh tapes for recording things like meetings and whatever because that's what they've always done yeah it wouldn't surprise me it's that like there is um little cassette tapes which the rest of the world yeah. hasn't made in years yet japan still has a booming industry for well i mean the other one for japan is um the clamshell phones or just you know, old cell phones. They just like, nope. This is a phone and a phone alone. It does nothing to else. Be, to be fair, I kind of like that. I yeah, like it I fact. wouldn't mind having it's, just a phone. But it, it is really interesting how much of like you know uh, yeah. Japan functions on. No, this has a purpose. Like, will mm. it, it keeps its purpose? You know, I think was it Laserdisc? Pretty much, really, only took off in Japan. I could yeah, be wrong. That was yeah, that was for a lot of reasons, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Next one. Next one. Cool. Uh, so uh this past Thursday, the official website for Goblin Slayer unveiled new promo- a new promotional image and trailer announcing season two coming sometime in twenty twenty. It also announced the returning cast and a slight change in the staff. Takaru uh, so Takaharu Ozaki will uh, move from director to chief director and will be replaced by Misato Takeda. Uh, Takada? Takada, uh, yep. Takada. Yeah. Uh, who did uh, Sa- Sayuki Reloaded, Zeroin, um, the animations. Is one that I watched and, like, I didn't. I didn't actually finish but it because it, it was part of a series. It was like several series. seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the animation was really good. Uh, so, I mean, you know. The animation studio will uh, will also change from White Fox to Leiden 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 Films, uh, who did a uh, Akashic Records of Bassid Magical Instructor. Oh shit! I did watch that. I actually enjoyed that one. Bastard Heavy Metal, Dark Fantasy, Berserk, the bad one, and Attack on Titan. Uh, so bit of a I mixed mean, bag fair, there. I mean. Bastard Heavy Metal Dark Fantasy. That that one's I think their most recent one. As much and as you the animation the story, on that, the animation, yeah, the, yeah, the animation's yeah. spot on. To be fair, so I think like I think yeah, I can see the slight differences, but oh damn, I'm excited for this. Oh damn, goblins! <laughs> oh, oh the goblins! Gotta kill the goblins! Oh, yeah. So. Uh, does the article say anything about any changes in voice actors or actresses? No, 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 no. All that, all that is com- all those actors and actresses are coming back. Uh, Excellent. Yes, returning cast Goblins. and a slight change up in this. Yeah, yep. Okay. Yeah. Goblins. Yep. It does oh, look great. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that art. Oh. I wonder oh. if the manga has gotten any further. I don't know. 
the manga from where I read up to stopped halfway through the movie. Oh, that's so, a shame. So, it, well, I mean, it's just as far as it got. So, but yeah. Right. Let's move on to another Goblin Slayer uh, related article. At the same event announcing the second season of Goblin Slayer, they also announced a new game coming out for PC and Switch titled Goblin Slayer Another Adventure Nightmare Feast. Uh, however, they did not announce any other details other than that it will be in both English and Japanese. So very, very early days. Okay, uh, okay, okay. This would be instant win, right? If the abridged crew <laughs> dubbed <laughs> the, like, <laughs> the game. <laughs> the Goblin! Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, yeah, we'll definitely be keeping an eye on that as as it uh, develops because we love Goblin Slayer. What one one hopes? Like, I mean, a lot of the anime games often tend to be cash grabs, so you know. Yeah, yeah. All right, Laws, you get another. You get an interesting one. While many sites and sources are banning the sale of algorithm generated art, the publishing company Sinchosha's Brunch. Brunch Comics Division is printing a full color manga using it. The manga is titled Cyberpunk Momotaro and uses the Mid Journey software to create and edit images into a cohesive sci fi story. The synopsis reads as follows In a retelling of the classic Momotaro, Peach John fills the title role. An old couple who runs a strip club in Neo Okayama discovers an unconscious boy at their doorstep. I think you the need to slow down. is an amnesiac, but has locked data from KBY Radio FM at his hip. <laughs> it is Peach John's destiny to fight against formidable foes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Slower yeah. you it's say like it. The better it is. The more oh. emphasis you put on key points enables badassery. Oh, right, because I'm not logged in. That's why it didn't show up. But yeah, here's some here's some examples from the. Uh... Oh, oh, what is up with the? No, no, go back, oh, go back. Want, yeah, this bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. what is up with that? <laughs> I think that's. I think uh, that's a hit here's enough. the question, though. I don't know. It's quite interesting. Do that. Do they do the entire thing only through what the algorithm produces, or do they then retroactively try and edit it? Because it's quite interesting. It'd be. I think. I think they should leave it. If it's a little bit off like that, then 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 it kind of adds the uniqueness of it. This is. Yeah. This could be. This you know, image other places that are banning is, it. This whole section here is crazy. Um, I don't get me wrong. I like it a lot, but um, like this, this works well because you can quite easily tell that um, the the two characters here are the same character, even from the previous page. Oh but yeah. If you go back to the, if you go back to the first page, um, and you can't tell that these are the same person at all. Not only that, but also if you go to the next page, I don't think right. Are these I. I think they're supposed to be like all three of them are supposed to be the yeah, same. Yeah, I think they're all Peach John. Yeah. Oh. So it's it's I kind of feel in some places it may need to be touched up, but in other places I think it's fine. Like you know, she had her glasses a previous scene, but now she doesn't have her glasses at all. I mean, I got no real issue. with Oh that. yeah, but I mean, she can just take those off once because they're inside now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she has like this weird blue jacket. The previous page. Has a similar blue jacket and then all of a sudden a pink, pink jacket. Here, yeah, yeah. I, I think I I, she's, but she's moving around the room. It could be lighting. I mean, I think Lars has a really solid point. Like, I think they should keep it, but I think oh, yeah. when there's glaring discrepancies well, like this, uh, the first page, that's my concern. Uh, it it uh. As it is reading. Nazareth uh, AI so, is Jen. So they they use the software to to it says edit and assemble the output into a co cohesive story. So I assume that they either they run it until they get something exactly like uh, close enough to what they want, 
because uh, with Mid Journey, you can like you can keep doing new generations and adding details and refining it. Uh, yeah. So that that would be my guess. Is but they may they it, it sounds like they may also be doing some touch ups and edits in the in the uh, uh, after like well, afterwards. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's just for compositing. So like yeah. you know the two characters are in the same panel. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's you know I wouldn't imagine it's anything else. But anyway, we move on to the next one. Yes, let us let us move uh, swiftly onwards. Is this one my one? This is yours. Yes. Okay. Uh, the media company Enlight has expanded into Japan, where they promise to announce partnership with Oscar-nominated production company Next. With Anne. 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 Oscar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I missed the Anne. Next month you on you a new project fan called. Again. No, <laughs> called. Uh, <laughs> Mif- I, I don't know how you pronounce that. Mifin- oh, that's. An- I, I think it's Mafinda. Is that an M? Yes, that's an M. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mafinda. Um, the style is described as Aframe. Okay, Aframe. Or anime with themes and stories based on indigenous Africa. The synopsis reads, Mephinda tells the story of a young girl, Odie, who is transported into the past where she joins another girl, Asambi. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They must venture into Mafinda and confront evil spirits to reclaim the Nikisi. Yep, yeah, if she has any hope of returning home. I mean, it's and interesting. Honestly, the style looks like it feels very late '80s sort of thing, and yeah. I'm I'm fine with that. It looks really cool. Hmm. Um, and I'm all for more original, like, uh, content that, that is, is I'm, not just, you know, the normal. I'm just going to say, I really hope that the promotional material doesn't let it down because this looks really cool and kick-ass. Yeah. Like. Look at how you know, expressive I mean, you... those faces are and, and not this animal and this guy and like the detail and just all oh, the the expressions on the cat, on the cat. Sure, yeah. I, it's just ah oh. it has hell of a lot of potential i just hope that you know whichever production company works on it they do a good i mean it kind of feels like, like obviously to me it's like yes we have the production company we've been working with the production company for bloody months we just, just don't want to announce you. it yeah yeah part of, part of me so, wonders if it's uh ghibli but mappa oh oh mappa could be mappa <laughs> no 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 i'm joking because mappa have been claimed to have been taking literally everything oh right yes yes that's right that's yeah. right all right uh from that we move on to another story Sony aims to make gaming more accessible by creating a new, highly customizable controller kit for the PlayStation 5. The controller is designed to be to lie flat or mount to a tripod, while the analog stick can be repositioned or its distance changed. Uh, it also comes with a variety of analog stick caps and buttons in different shapes and sizes, all of which can be swapped out to create different layouts depending on ability. There are also software options to change the button mapping as well as create button macros. So unfortunately, this video has nothing in it but people talking about it. Uh, I, uh, I, I I looked through it, but I assume this is this is the prototype. It looks like yeah, you can slide this the the, the joystick out and move it around, and I assume these buttons pop off so you can put different ones on uh, or move I mean, them around. I'm, I'm... What, why would you want to pop them off? You might want different ones, uh, or put them. You might want to put them in different positions. Like this oh, long yeah, one here, yeah. you may not want this long one here. Here, you may want it over here. I'm I'm interested how it's supposed to work. Yeah, uh, I I would love to see this in action because it sounds really interesting. I mean, don't 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 get me wrong. I imagine it is very well designed, but I mean, are you supposed to use your feet for it? Well, I mean, it's it's for a variety of disabilities from what I understand. So it could be, you know, yeah. maybe you don't have good yeah. hand control, maybe, you know, so you can really only uh, tap oh, big of objects. Of course, and, you know. I'm also, I'm very interested to see it, like, they said, like, mounted on a tripod and things. Again, I'm yeah. very interested to see yeah. what it looks like. I'm, I'm, I'm just keen to know how it 
functions realistically. Yeah, I'm really sad that it's not. You, they don't have the video, have it used in the video because that would have been amazing. Well, I'm also kind of happy. This does make me very happy. Actually, looking at it, yeah, I can see that there's different types of buttons you've got there. The triangle and the circle are one large button. What I yeah. assume is the R2 hidden behind the joystick is actually a raised trigger button. Yeah. Yes. So you've got. Yeah, and, and these have the these have X, longer. Have... Yeah. yeah. And I assume you can change like this is just where. And the, uh, if you look, the L2 R1s go. are rounded but short, whereas the one on the other side of the joystick is flat and short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and like this one's tilted down more, and and no, it's yeah. flat. It's flat. Look, no, no, it's, it's flat. Whereas the ones on the left are flat. curved. That Raised. one's literally. Flat. Oh yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. Um, but the fact that I say this is that let's be fair, right? The controller for the um, God, where's where's it called? <laughs> the control the rough sets for a controller for somebody who is able handed, let's say, with two hands, yeah, has kind of reached peak. Yeah. This this is just this is this is almost a complete technology as far as this is really gonna progress. It it yeah. you can you can do a little bit of change on it, but this is this has become pretty much the standard form now since I think it first appeared really the PlayStation One, the original yeah. PlayStation hat when they added the two Dual Shock. Um, yeah, the, people the people keep trying just... to innovate on it, but we keep coming back to this very similar design. Yeah, it's 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 this this. I mean, and they can adjust it and do little things, but it's never going away from this. I don't think unless unless through some other innovation from outside the box, like you know, I mean, VR's got its own controllers, but so they so now obviously you've got these people who had to make controllers every generation have to do something else. So making things like this, I feel, is great because they're able to One... innovate now, and maybe eventually they'll go so far down the rabbit hole of doing this that they'll discover things that can finally actually break through and innovate the main controller as well. One, One thing is... I would love. Sorry, go ahead, Zeno. Yes. One, one thing I would love as um, a gamer is like, so I'm, I'm holding up the Steam controller, which I'm sure Loz is very aware oh, yeah, of. It's, very, very, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the, the big thing for me is the fact that under the grips where your, you know, your middle finger, ring finger, and little finger goes, like they've got buttons yes. that you can actually use, like on the Steam controller. I, That's I've the never only real seen that. I can see. Yeah, I've never seen that for something like the the PlayStation controllers. The uh, oh, you mean there, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, it's it's just like, come on, guys, just like we have more fingers. My yeah, the my other friend... thing you could do is a touch screen here on the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of like uh, the Vita head. And then, yeah, and touch screen maybe some touch area in the middle. My know, uh, the PlayStation, PlayStation... Was fine with that, but I think they yeah they didn't quite do it right. Yeah, my my I friend Rom and I you have to reach over. <laughs> <laughs> my friend Rom and I had an idea for like a round one, so it's like a ball that you hold in your hand. Uh, but I don't really know how effective that would be. Um, yeah. Anyway, as as somebody who was disabled and had a lot of time on their hands for for a long time, gaming is like a really good way to to feel like you know, not life's not like like life's not so crappy. So anything that yeah. opens it up to more people. In um, you know, even if they just play casual games, you know, that's that's amazing. That's such a good thing. Yeah. But for Nazareth, souls are nothing. Souls are nothing, man. Souls are nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's devour souls for breakfast. <laughs> right, coming into the home stretch, laws, if you please. Laws. There was an absolute wealth of Japanese celebrities who decided to tie the knot on New Year's Day. While we wish all the new couples a lifetime of happiness, Nazareth only recognized one couple based on their works. Ryoto Katayose, who debuted in the live-action Great Teacher on Izuka series, married Tao Chuchia? Chuchia? I think so, yeah. Uh, who played Misao Makimachi in live-action Ronnie Kenshin films. Young Yuzua Yusagi in Alice in Borderland and 10-year-old Satoru Funjunuma in the Erased anime. Nazareth has added this uh, news article in because he will he needs Happiness. to highlight the souls he will future feed on <laughs> in their to come in the future. Yes, I'm gonna balance out the deaths. Uh <laughs> yep. uh, and, oh, and then finally ooh. last story. Ooh. Right, okay, last story. In a New Year's letter released last year, a week, Square Enix president Yosuke Matsuda revealed that the company has multiple 
blockchain, NFT, and cryptocurrency games in development based on their current selection of IPs. You know, the ones that they got left over since they actually mm -hmm. sold a shit ton of the Western ones. Um, After you know, they the good um, ones. all their money on NFTs last time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in a previous letter, Matsuda uh, said, I think that's sorry, what she said, said yeah. uh, he looked forward to NFTs becoming as familiar as dealings in physical goods. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's can, gone can, down can, well. Can somebody let, let him out of the office and let him catch up with Bond News where NFTs are just... <laughs> it's just I think this is so hard. Yeah, I think this is a case of they decided last year that they were going to do this, and now they have to stay the course. <laughs> no, it's like, it's, I, I envision this right as blackjack, right? So you've got you got the dealer who is the rest of the world, and you've got Mats <laughs> Matsuda who's just going like, um, what's got hit me? And he's like, um, you got fifteen, hit me. 22 it's like you know you're bust it's like hit me 30 you've already lost it's like hit me <laughs> it's just like, no stop oh doubling down what? how did i, I miss like this Matt had previously explained that Square Enix was keeping a close eye on societal shifts in the area of blockchain games, which are built on the premise of a token economy. Although we realize that some people who play to have fun, and play quote unquote play to have fun, and who form the majority of players have voiced res reservations against the trend of blockchain gaming, he also believed that there will be people who are motivated to play to contribute. Oh my god. Play to contribute. Yes. Uh, Play token, token economy has the potential to provide content generating users with explicit incentives which would lead to greater consistency. So he wants, I think he wants people to de it's decentralized oh god he's got all the buzzwords oh my god wait what the f hold on growth and decentralized <gasps> gaming oh my god <laughs> I think he, wants, he saw a token he wants, economy as having the potential to provide content generating users with oh. explicit incentives which should lead to a greater consistency in their motivation. Matsuda hoped that this self-sustaining game growth and decentralized decentralized oh. gaming would become a major trend. Square Enix planned to ramp up its efforts to develop a business accordingly, with an eye to potentially issuing its own tokens in the future while listening to user groups. Square Enix had discussed in an interview report in November 2021 that it was entering the NFT market and is thinking of entering into blockchain game. Square Enix was founded in September of 1975 as Enix. Square was founded in 1983. Emerging Enix and Square was finalized in November 2002 after Sony acquired an 18.6% of Square in 2001. I, there there this, are things that could there are so things it, that could make this work, and I don't get why it, it's not it, it, there. But but they like they say that, that oh we're gonna it they focus so much on the making all the money from the yeah. the the crypto side of things instead yeah. of let up with the game side of things why what is this going to add to our game what unique things does this do in our game I'll give you an example of how this could have worked let's take World of Warcraft massively yep. massively successful mm -hmm. and there's raid gear. Now, I remember mm -hmm. the first time, I mean, I an example of it, obviously in different raid tiers that got difficulty as more and more came out over the years, they used to put unique looking sets in. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time, and obviously World of Warcraft had massive shoulder pads on your characters. It's, 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 it's iconic for it. When I first saw the tier one raid warrior shoulders, I was like, whoa, those look amazing. I want those. They literally are. They're one of the best shoulder pads they ever made, and they are mm -hmm. just so iconic. Mm -hmm. If you add it in somehow, like we see in all these animes, they do this kind of thing, where the NFT is make it generates unique looks to gear and shoulders, where like you have that exclusive look. And not not ah. only that you have a sort of style shoulders, you know, this is the next problem with NFTs, is that they get greedy. If it was really limited, if you had that they were so unique, they, these shoulders and they rolled, and that was unique. But instead what they do, because again, they focus on the making money side of things and they need lots of tokens to spew, they, like, um, I remember seeing in an, in an um, FBS, they had NFTs, it was one of the Ubisoft ones, and it was like a, a skull helmet for one of the Ghost Recon games, and the only mm. unique thing about it was in-game, the number on the skull here. Yeah. But everyone's skull was the same skull, it just had a different number on it. 
That's no not going to drive pathetic. anything. Teeth, nothing That's different. Pathetic. Oh my god. Right. Whereas if you have it, have it that you you create a very in depth system for creating randomized three D models, so that it's like look at these shoulders. They're not just oh these shoulders have I don't know a slightly like the monkeys, you know the, those stupid monkey. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, all slightly yeah. different. The same. But if you made it that they only produced limited numbers of each set item in different slots or whatever, and they were really unique and really special, and maybe even gave a small gameplay advantage, and then nothing looked even close like that, then they might add something to the game and have value that players would want. Instead, what they'll do is they'll add in, let's say it's Square Enix. Everyone knows who Final Fantasy VII Cloud is, yeah? Yeah. 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 It'll be a billion different Buster Swords with a different number up the side. That's what yep. they'll do. Yeah. And it adds nothing think, to the game. It's just think, trying yeah. to farm money. I think they're also they trying to encourage. One works. One won't. I think they're also trying right. to potentially encourage third-party people to to generate content and, yes, and yes, earn so, money so, that uh, way. Let's take it to Final Fantasy fourteen. What they could do, uh, the housing market thing in that is really uh, adds unique things to it. So let's say that people could generate and sort of adjust and create with it a certain style of house that then gets locked as the NFT for that house, and that only this type of house in this exact style with the contents inside. Right, can yeah. exist, and that becomes yeah. an instant NFT. So if you want that house, you have to have that NFT, and then nobody, you can't, nobody else can even make something similar to that house. It, you know, mm. you, you can have the bog standard house, but then there's the special NFT houses which have special effects, special things, but they can be made by players, and then they get minted. So the goal is to make the thing of the game first, that then gets backed up by the 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 blockchain crypto stuff. Instead, yeah. they yeah. focus on the blockchain crypto stuff and having as yeah. many things yeah. to sell as possible. And then the, then they go, well, what are we actually going to make this thing in game? What's the thing that's tied to the database? Because that's what they care about: more points on the yeah. database. Okay, well, what we're going to do? Oh, well, it's this golden monkey statue. And what's the difference? Okay, well, it. It's the color and the amount of beads it's holding in its right hand. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, and that's the that's yeah. the problem. They they could do it one way. They could take gaming, which has this crazy innovative thing about you know people can make things, uh, and they could also add it in games. The other thing is you could let people destroy or uh, combine the NFTs to make another NFT. So if you've got acquired again, it has to be limited. Not that there's a billion different monkey statues, and you combine two monkey statues to make a monkey statue with. It's holding a triangle instead of beads. <gasps> you know, it's it doesn't make difference. But if it was like I combine this house and this house, and I can unlock a special castle, and it's based on let's say the value that those last entities were last traded for to what the output is, randomized and created by players, it could it could happen. Sure. Yeah. But no, they focus on making more points on their database instead of me the the meaning of what those points in the database are. It's the same every time. Yep. Bloody monkeys. Yep. yep. <laughs> You know what I mean by that, yeah. I don't know. Oh, yes, yeah, it's the board yes. yeah, yeah. But I mean, it works on multiple levels, and it's great. Um, <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, I believe that will do it for the news this week, then. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, have a wonderful week. Look out for Compacast coming out later this week. It was a, it was, it's the full autumn 2022 season review, and boy... We have a lot to talk about uh, with Gundam, so look forward to that. Thank you guys for joining me, and uh, news. News! News!